damn it! You know, I said I was gonna get through all of these, but... <laughs> my lord. This was a tough sit-through. Jurassic Park 3 was directed by Joe Johnston, not Steven Spielberg, and it once again stars Sam Neill as Dr. Alan Grant, finally making his return to the franchise. The Lost World saw Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm return to the island, and the studio looked at it and was like, okay, four years after The Lost World, which was a pretty good movie, now it's time to get Alan Grant back into the picture. But how in the heck were they going to do that? Well, Alan Grant is persuaded by a wealthy businessman to conduct an aerial tour of Isla Sorna, InGen's second site for a failed Jurassic Park experiment, which you might remember from The Lost World. And Dr. Alan Grant discovers the true reason for his invitation along the way, and they must attempt to escape with their lives in search of the wealthy businessman's young son, Eric. So before I get into the most damning thing about Jurassic Park 3, do I even need to tell you what the best part is? I'll give you a wild guess. It starts with Sam and ends with Neil. This guy is just trying his damnedest in this film. It was so cool to see him again as Dr. Alan Grant in a new Jurassic Park film, which for 2001 was a pretty big freaking deal that summer. And there are some nice looking creatures in this film. The CGI is certainly evolving, you'll notice. The Spinosaurus in particular is a terrifying looking creature, and there's a lot of very extremely polarizing things about the Spinosaurus, which I'll certainly get into. But the thing is, Joe Johnston is a director that I feel like could have made this a really special film. He made a movie called The Rocketeer about five or six years prior to this. That is such a fun movie. Really, really cool. And then about a decade later, he comes out with Captain America the First Avenger, which is considered by many the most underrated in the entire MCU. So I don't know if this is directly on him or the screenwriters of Jurassic Park 3, but holy sh**, this movie's so f***ing boring. Most of every action sequence involving the human characters in this film are pretty much just chase sequences. They're running away from gigantic dinosaurs, which is usually the Spinosaurus, who they're trying to set up as the next big baddie. They do that when they kill off the f***ing T-Rex. I mean, I'm fine with the Spinosaurus killing off an iconic dinosaur, but at least make the action sequence longer than 30 seconds. Like, all the action sequences of note I couldn't tell you what happened other than the characters run away from gigantic carnivores in a jungle. And it just gets, I'm sorry, it gets very, very repetitive, especially when you go back and rewatch Jurassic Park 3. Speaking of these human characters, aside from Dr. Alan Grant, what's the word I'm looking for here? They're not very likable human beings. The kid in this film, Eric, is definitely very resourceful, but you only really are introduced to him around the halfway point in the film. And he really doesn't need a whole lot of rescuing, it turns out. He's been out there for eight weeks, and he's surviving just fine on his own. But the big heart and soul of this movie is pretty much the parents looking for the kid, and they pretty much blow their load on that reunion, like, not even halfway through. And then shortly after that, Jurassic Park 3 just meanders, and then grinds to a halt. This is only an hour and a half, and I feel like these filmmakers wanted to get out of there as quickly as they possibly could. And I mean, these are all really talented people that are in here. William H. Macy, the late Michael Jeter is in this in a small supporting role. Uh, oh god, let's talk about Tia Leone for a second. She plays the wife Amanda Kirby in here. Poorly. All of her dialogue is basically just begging for the dinosaurs to come out and eat her. She's calling out for her son as loud as she possibly can through a megaphone, and Sam Neill is just standing there like, what the hell am I doing here? And God bless the man's heart, he's really trying his best with the material he's given. But when the supporting characters, especially the wife here, when they're just screaming and just yelling out for their son, it's like, the movie's given up. And that's what makes the first two Jurassic Park films so amazing to me, are those human characters. Ian Malcolm does not have a presence in this film. He is alluded to in a couple of small, really nice moments that Sam Neill shares with the kid. But aside from Alan Grant, and to an extent, this kid, who you don't even really get to know until a good portion of the film passes, like, there's nobody to really root for. These parents are so unlikable, and they could have been... Here's my thing. I feel like this movie had a huge missed opportunity. Wouldn't it have been much more interesting if these parents were antagonists, basically being the money grabbers to lure Sam Neill back onto the island? Like, that would have been so much more interesting. Sam Neill really has no reason or no intention to go back to this island after the events of Jurassic Park. 
And why would he? Which brings me to the lecture scene he has at the beginning where some students are just walking out like they usually do in a big college lecture hall anyway. But he's basically sitting there saying, I have no reason to return to Jurassic Park and I have no intention of doing so. Movie over! Roll credits! There's no reason for him to be in here. I mean, he could have had more to do for Ellie Sattler in this film besides her bookending the movie. Yeah, I bet she didn't remember Laura Dern is in this film. And she's great. She's a brilliant actress. There really isn't enough of Ellie Sattler to really offset the terror of Jurassic Park 3. Like, I get it. You don't want to send Sam Neill to the island just out of sheer love. Maybe Ellie Sattler is on the island first. And I get that you don't want to make a similar movie to the Lost World, but that dynamic with Ian Malcolm and Sarah Harding was heartfelt. Ian Malcolm is given a reason to return to Isla Sorna, basically just out of sheer love. Alan Grant has no intention of going to Isla Sorna until freaking William H. Macy shoves a big gigantic check in front of him with a bunch of zeros, and it's all about the money. Because of course it is. I hate when blockbusters do that, when money is just the big kicker for people to go and do something. It just comes off inexcusably lazy, my friends. So aside from some good CGI, some good musical score from John Williams once again, and a very fun performance from Sam Neill, there's really not much to write home about with Jurassic World 3. I'm gonna give this movie a D+. Plus. Certainly one of the weaker entries into this franchise. I said that we were gonna get through all of them, we're ripping it off like a band-aid. There we go. And guys, stay tuned next Tuesday for my look at Jurassic World, the film which 14 years after Jurassic Park 3, it tried to remedy whatever legacy the Jurassic Park sequels have. A little bit better. But yeah, stay tuned for that review and much, much more, guys. If y'all are new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and that notification bell right next to it. That way you guys can always stay in the loop. And what the heck, smash that like button on your way out. That would be some tremendous help as well, my friends. In addition to me finishing off the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World series over here. We've got a busy, busy blockbuster season with Top Gun Maverick rounding out the month of May, especially going into the month of June and the hefty Independence Day weekend wrapping up with Thor Love and Thunder. It's going to be a fun summer, my friends, so I cannot wait to bring all this content to you guys and much, much more. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence! <laughs>